we just we had our mindset to go play in Kansas City, and, and uh, it, 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 I, it is it is tough because they they have to formulate the plans for coin tosses, and they got to formulate the plans for neutral side games, and we just keep screwing it up for everybody, and I hate that for, for people that have to endure all those logistical issues, and then uh, we just keep screwing it up. So I'm sorry. Yeah, that little smile at the end. <laughs> Very sorry about that. Uninvited guests, I like it. <laughs> yeah. Joe Burrow. Better get those refunds, Joe Burrow he said. said right after the game. <laughs> yeah. Right after the game to Tracy Wolfson. Better send those refunds. Yeah. And and see, th- th- that it, it, the Bills should be pissed at the league because that was a completely unnecessary, gratuitous item of bulletin board material that the league gave an already pissed off Bengals team. The Bengals were already pissed off because they had been completely ignored in everything that happened at 345 Park Avenue in the aftermath of the cancellation of the Bills-Bengals game from Week 17 following the cardiac arrest on the field of DeMar Hamlin. The Bengals had been not, not just overlooked. They'd been affirmatively screwed. There was that weird, stupid-ass coin flip if the Ravens had beaten the Bengals in week 18 to complete the sweep even though the Bengals win the division by virtue of better winning percentage we're going to flip a coin to decide who gets the home game between the three seed and the six seed even though we're still going to say the Bengals are the three seed which makes no sense whatsoever yeah that was going to happen the Bengals beat the Ravens so it never came to that in the regular season finale And then with all the obsession over the coin toss, not the coin toss, it was coin toss for that. It was neutral site for a potential Chiefs-Bills AFC championship. There was never any conversation. Well, there was conversation. Troy Vincent, the executive VP of football operations, admitted this late last week. But there was never a serious push to deal with the potential inequity of a Bills-Bengals divisional round game landing in Buffalo when it would have been in Cincinnati if they had finished that game from three weeks ago tonight. So the Bengals have already been upset. And then you throw on top of it, they sold tickets and bragged about it. I know they had to sell the tickets to the neutral site conference championship game, but they bragged about it on Friday. They made a big deal about it on Friday. And that just gets the Bengals even more lathered up, Chris, to go out there and, and stick it, not just to the bills, but to everyone. Yeah. Yeah. The Bengals like this. They like it. They're chippy. They're chippy before this. I mean, we saw that last year. They got some guys that they just, they don't care. And like like we kind of said when this was all getting figured out, we were like, I don't know. Joe Burrow, the Bengals, they're going to be like, hey, screw you. We'll play in the parking lot. We'll see who wins that one. You know, they got a little of that attitude. Burrow's a bring it on guy. Jamar Chase and T Higgins and Joe Mixon are bring it on guys. They got a lot of them on defense too. They're just like, come on, bring it on. We love the fight. That's what's awesome about the Bengals. And Joe Burrow, I don't know. I think he's become maybe the best interview in football right now. Just the the things he says after the game, the way he acknowledges it. Yeah, that's two of the best in the game going at it as he's talking about him and Mahomes and two of the best teams to go at it too. Yeah, better get those refunds. I mean, he's just, come on. Who delivers better than Joe Burrow with what he says right now? They got something about them. It's, It's a... It's a belief in a magic that we really haven't seen other than Mahomes and the Chiefs, you know, as of late. We know the Bills, they're close, but they don't quite have those playmakers. We'll get into that here in a minute that the Bengals have. They don't have the personalities and the playmakers, the Bengals. The Bengals have a little bit of that showmanship. Oh, the big lights are on? We love it. Let's do it. And uh, I, I think that pops out in big ways, and that's why they're not going to blink one one iota next week when they're in Kansas City for that matchup. Does that even make sense? And, and I'm still astounded by yeah, – yeah, it did. Okay. I'm astounded by the fact that we saw it last year, and I think collectively the attitude was this is a fluke. It's a one-year an thing, right? This yeah. isn't here to stay. Right. They're not here to stay. It's kind of cute. It's kind of fun. It's like the 85 Bears captured everyone's imagination – and then we moved on with our regularly scheduled programming. No, the Bengals are here to stay. And we played right into their hands. Remember back in August, I'm saying, I worry about the Bills. There's too much pressure on the Bills. Why are the Bills the one that everybody thinks is going to win the Super Bowl? Why are the Bills the one? They didn't even get they didn't get to the conference championship last year. And they're the ones walking around with the target on their backs. What the hell? 
I mean, it played. I've said it. We can find the tape. Yeah, you did. This plays out well for the Bengals because the Bengals are like, why is nobody talking about us? We just went to the freaking Super Bowl and almost won it. Yeah. So you you throw that edge, you throw that attitude, and and Bur- I mean Burrow, when it's time to go. You got, as I said, as I said last Sunday night, some quarterbacks step up in the playoffs and some don't. Burrow does. And it's palpable. It's real. He he achieves a higher level of everything. Everything. The ball is more accurate. His decisions are more are more precise everything he's just a i mean he's already great in the regular season but he becomes better he morphs into a better player when the season's on the line that's special that's rare and that means the bengals are going to be in it that's every right. year that he's in the nfl that's right and they got the talent and you know again hey burrow chase mixon playmakers defense aside trey hendrickson I mean, the pass rush, the linebackers are good. The secondary, everybody's good, right? And then, I mean, really, what was the star of the show was was by far the thing that the reason that I couldn't pick the Bengals to win the game. I mean, I know I I said to you, Mike, when we talked about the game last week, the Bengals are better. I, I said on the show last week, I think they're the most complete team in the AFC. But the offensive line was an issue. You know, they gave us nothing last week in that Ravens game to think that they were going to be able to block Buffalo. That was the shocking thing, and we saw it like, you know, I know you were probably in an airport on an airplane, but when you were watching your phone, you saw it right away, right, Mike? Like it was one of those where it was like the first drive. Okay, wait, whoa, he's got time to throw. Uh-oh. Oh, all right, well, let's see them running up the middle for Joe Mixon. He probably won't go anywhere just like last week. Whoa, okay, whoa, that was easy for eight yards. Whoa, that was easy again for eight yards. It was right away to where you went, okay, wait, since he's got something here up front, these guys are answering the bell a little bit. And it was a machine. It was a takeover. It was a takeover. It was literally one team where you went, whoa, this team's hitting on all cylinders. The other team is reeling, and I don't know if they're going to ever be able to stop them here. And, you know, um, fortunately, they finally did to give us a little theatrics, but uh, it was from the get-go, and I think that was pretty probably apparent to you as well. Oh, when it was 14 nothing, I'm thinking, they got, how are the Bills ever right? going to erase this deficit and then ultimately outscore them. Yeah. Because that's the thing. Oh, we're down 14. We need 14 points. Well, yeah, you also need to keep them from getting another 14 points along the way. And in the end, they never got to 14, and the Bengals got another 13 in 27-10, the final score. It, it, but you're right. 60% of the offensive line gone. And, and this is a testament to the Bengals for defying everyone's expectations. That's right. And it plays into their hands again. Exactly. Because uh, I'm sure that Zach Taylor got them all cranked up over, no one thinks you guys can come in and get it done. And Jackson Carmen came in and he got it done. He did. At left tackle. Yeah. First start ever. And, and so, you know, that's the thing. Back up sometimes, step up. And when you have a guy like Joe Burrow who has ultimate confidence in himself, that stuff is contagious. It when is. you are around people who have a knack, for rising to the occasion, no matter the circumstances, you feel compelled to tap into something within yourself to do the same thing. That is a very real human emotion that transcends sport, it transcends circumstance, it transcends industry, and it's one of the reasons why I don't like analytics, because it ignores the very human reality that these football players are not machines. They're not robots. They're not people who you wind up and they do whatever, you know, the circumstance. Do. No, there are moments where the humanity takes over. Yeah. And when you've got a Joe Burrow who elevates himself and he's the leader of your team, that's why Jackson Carmen. It's one of the reasons why Jackson Carmen comes in and holds it down at left tackle. Yeah, because yeah. he sees what Joe Burrow is doing, right. And he taps into the best part, best version of himself, right. And and exceeds whatever he previously thought he could have done. Agreed. I'm it, convinced that that's real. I, I've, I've lived that. You. I've been around that. Yeah. I've been inspired by people like that. I, definitely. I mean, listen, we've seen Tom Brady do that. We've seen Peyton Manning do that to team. I mean, that, that's yeah. There's this. That's their greatness. You know, I don't want to let that guy down, right? And he's great, and I want to be great with him. So let me do it, 
right? I mean, that's that's where it 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 it, it really like kind of comes together that way. And then he also knows like, hey, Joe's he'll take care of me too. He he he'll 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 get the ball out of his hand. He'll let me get going. I mean, so they know everything kind of favors them that way. The way that's yeah, that's why they want to get in the foxhole with these guys because they're just like, damn, dude, it's, he'll lead us out of here some way. I mean, again, the numbers aren't like eye popping. That's what's always amazing about Burrow. But it's the the moment, and then when it's a gotta have it moment, or hey, wait, here's the chance to stick the dagger in him. He just usually never fails in that department. Oh, it's it's a big moment, man. If they score a touchdown here, they're gonna put him in a bind. Boom, they score the touchdown. That's where it's the he goes to the jugular and he gets it most times. That's where he's special. And that's where the Bengals are special. They really are. They got a toughness about them. You know, Joe, of course, is so efficient. And ultimately, Mike, we saw what we've talked about a little bit all year. You know, the the Bills are missing some some pieces on that team that just don't put them in the class of the superstars that the Bengals and the Chiefs and the 49ers and the Cowboys and even the Philadelphia Eagles have. And I think we kind of saw that yesterday, that it just came back to one guy, and one guy can't get it done when you're playing the elite teams in football. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you a thousand percent, and the Bengals are going to continue to be special. And and I'm telling you right now, I don't yeah. care. I yeah. don't care. It's three days before we make our picks. Don't I'm do it. Let me hear it. Weekend. You're taking the Bengals. I'm not. I am not. I am not picking against the Bengals ever again for as long as I live. Put it on your bulletin Assuming board, Andy Reid. Put Joe it Burrow. on there, Mahomes. Joe Burrow. Put it on, Go Kelsey. Ahead. Do it. Do it. Do it. Get I'm, Florio's I'm ass right now. He's taking him a week out. I'd How rather, disrespectful. <laughs> I, I'd, I'd rather be wrong. I'd rather be wrong by picking the Bengals and having them let me down because then I can crush them next Monday for being frauds <laughs> if they do. I am not. I'm not doing You're it again. I've seen it. I mean, to go into Buffalo, to go into Buffalo and beat them by 17 it points should have been more than a that. A team that was on an eight-game winning streak. Right. Are, are you kidding me? Yeah. On a day when Demar Hamlin is back, it's snowing. It's Buffalo Day. Yeah. I mean, when I turned on my phone, when, once I, you know, once I realized I wasn't gonna make, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had bad memories from yesterday. But once I decided to uh, to take a take a look at the phone and watch the, it, and I saw the snow, like, uh oh, oh boy, here we go. I'm yeah. gonna be right. Let's Bills go, are win. Buffalo. No way the Bengals are winning this one. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. I feel I feel bad for the Bills. Yeah. I feel bad for their fans. Um, I do too, but uh, the, the the Bengals have something going on. They yeah. got something going on, with, and it all starts with Joe Burrow. And Chris, you know what? Well, this is something to delve into in the future. They got to give him whatever he wants financially. They got to give him, and I'm going to write this after the show. He will be. I I think he should be. Whether or not Mike Brown does it, and he's the one owner I think who would do it, just because the league doesn't want him to do it. Just give Joe Burrow a percentage of the salary cap. Just do that. We're not. We don't care what the dollars are. We have this money. We have set dollars every year. Joe Burrow is getting a piece of it, and if it goes up through the roof, that's fine. It's worth it. It's, he's worth twenty percent of the salary cap, whatever the salary cap is. He's happy. We're happy, and we still have eighty cents on every dollar left over to put a team around him. We can live with that. Nobody wants to do that in the NFL. The NFL doesn't want them to do it. It's part of the collusion that happens. The collusion meetings, as the union calls them. It happens. Mike Brown may give them all a middle finger, especially after the way they got screwed in the aftermath of Week 17. Yeah, right. Maybe Mike Brown says, we're just going to do this because it makes sense because it guarantees we're going to have our guy because we have to have this guy. Yeah. Because as long as we have this guy, we are going to be in these positions. Here's Zach Taylor, coach of the Bengals gushing even more about his quarterback, Joe Burrow. He's the greatest, you know, and, and uh, he does a great job leading this team, managing the situations. The bigger the moment get, uh, the more calmer he gets, and the team feeds off of that. And uh, it's hard to run the ball in four minutes when you know that he could just throw it and get it probably, you know, but it, it's wise to let the clock run. But uh, he did a great job today. Yeah, I mean, look, he, he, he is right now – I mean, we always talk about Mahomes and Allen, Mahomes and Allen, Mahomes and Allen. Yeah. Burrow. Yeah. Burrow's in there. He's in that mix. I, he may be up there now. We may have to we may have to clear a spot for three at yeah. the top of the league right now. Right. I, I hear you. It's, it's, hey, I know that was a conversation last week. I mean, he's been nipping at their heels for sure. Yeah, he might have officially, you know, entered their stratosphere now. I, I mean, we, we knew he was clutch. I knew he's a machine. 
You know, that, that's for sure. I mean, his ability, again, that's where they got Buffalo in trouble yesterday. You know, one, the O-line was playing better. Two, Buffalo, they want to play zone. Joe Burrow's the best zone quarterback in football. He's the best. He just moves around and, oh, wait, there's pressure. Boom. Oh, there's pressure. Boom, boom. Oh, wait, there's no pressure. Ah, boom. I mean, he's just, he's amazing that way. Oh, it's man to man. Oh, okay. Good luck, Buffalo. You think you could cover T Higgins or Jamar Chase with your corners? Ha oh, negative ghost rider. So they had Buffalo screwed. And then when Buffalo was like, oh, wait, they can run the ball. It was like, oh no, you're double screwed. You got no chance to win the game. Right. And again, I mean, hey, we were this close a few times. It was 14 nothing. Cincinnati was driving down the field again where you were going, uh-oh. And then he finally got sacked on the third down where they punted the ball. And then, I mean, Buffalo went through the toughest 15-play drive ever to get a touchdown where you were like, wow, they got a, all right, we got a game. But, whoa, that was hard work. Cincinnati went right back down the field. And Jamar Chase, you know, arguably caught a touchdown pass. That was a tough call. I think I would have probably overturned it as well. He probably lost control. But it was easy for them to go down the field again. But I'm with you, Mike. He's, he's in their stratosphere. Hey. He definitely is. I'm glad you mentioned that because I agree with you. I don't think that was a catch. But this is the problem with boasting about the 50,000 tickets sold to the neutral site game and putting out this word that maybe this is something they'd like to do in the future, college atmosphere, half the stadium in one team's colors, the other half in the other team's colors. It gets people even more cynical about whether or not the NFL wants certain teams to win a game. And so when calls like that go against the – the Bengals and for the Bills when the Bills are the final ingredient in this Atlanta neutral site conference championship fantasy that the league has, people are going to say, nah, uh-huh, uh-huh, they've gotten the word, or at least they sense. Sometimes you don't have to tell them. They sense what the NFL wants, and some of these close calls are going in favor of the team that helps solidify that neutral site game. That's it. I just, that, that whole thing on Friday – they never should have had that announcement. They never should have thumped their chest. They never should have tried to kind of inject that into the atmosphere that they're so happy about this neutral site conference championship idea. Wait until it's it's final and then and then boast about it and brag about it and make it a big deal. I just don't think anything good yeah. comes from that. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.